Good morning and welcome to the Daily Connect. My name is Raymond and I'm so glad you could be a part of this time together. We're looking at God's Word. We're seeing where the Lord is leading us and who the Lord is calling us to be. Uh, today is Saturday and this is a pre-recorded message, but, uh, but I still want to make sure that we cover God's Word uh, every single uh, day of the week. Uh, today is no exception. Um, I just happened to be uh, at another place at the time of, uh, of this live stream. And so I'm doing a Malawi mission debrief uh, along with the rest of the team. And hopefully you're able to join. If you are, great. If not, uh, I'm glad you're here and looking at God's word. And we're, uh, we've been going through the book of Numbers and it's an opportunity for us to, to really see how God instructs a nation uh, to mobilize regarding worship, regarding uh, the spiritual inheritance, this allotment of land, and and all of this found in the book of Numbers. It, uh, as uh, If you've been following along, this has clearly been more than just about a census. In fact, it talks about census, but, but in reality, it really doesn't uh, do it justice. So with that, let's go ahead and dive into uh, today's reading, which is coming from Numbers chapter 27, we're going to be looking uh, at verses starting from 23 all the way, excuse me, uh, from verse 12 all the way to 23. And, and yeah, let's see what the Lord has to say to us today. We're going through the book of Numbers, and I titled this Spiritual Succession Plan. Spiritual, spiritual Succession Plan. Keeping spiritual momentum going. Uh, Numbers chapter 27, verses 12 through 23. Let's take a look, starting from verse 12. The Lord said to Moses, Go up into this mountain of Abiram and see the land that I have given to the people of Israel. When you have seen it, you shall, you also shall be gathered to your people, as your brother Aaron was. Because you rebelled against my word in the wilderness of Zin, when the congregation quarreled, failing to uphold me as holy at the waters before their eyes. These are the waters of Meribah of Kadesh in the wilderness of Zin. Let's pause there for a moment. Now, as we look at this, well, and if you're recalling what we talked about yesterday, this is quite a juxtaposition of the role of Moses. Last we read, Moses was basically the Supreme Court for a matter regarding allotment of land, uh, particularly in a family that uh, does not have any sons. And as a result, the, uh, the the concern was this particular family would not have an allotment uh, and really to carry on the uh, the spiritual legacy uh, to uh, and have this concern that they're going to die out and and be considered as God's judgment. But in fact, God has a way. God has a way to keep that spiritual inheritance within the family and uh, not just addressing this particular family's matter, but also as a, uh, as a precept for the entire nation. And then to go from that, uh, Moses' high role in that, to now Moses facing the fact that he's not going to enter into the promised land. He's actually going to, the last thing that he's going to see is the, is the promised land before he passes away. And so that's where we're at right now. This is quite a quite a change. Moses has been instructed by God to go about 10 miles out to this mountainous range uh, of the northwestern part of Moab uh, and there to view the promised land. This would be uh, the last thing that he would see before he, uh, he breathes his last, basically. Uh, Anytime you see gathered with his people, gathered with your people, that's um, that's an, another way of saying you're going to you're going to pass away at this point. Uh, and it's actually a good thing in that uh, when one is gathered with uh, your people, gathered with their fathers, it's really to say you're going to now join with your forefathers uh, where they are at. Uh, it's a, a spiritual uh, family reunion, if you will. God also reminds Moses of the reason. The whole reason why you're not able to enter into this promised land is because of the rebellion that took place and your response to it. You did not uphold my holiness. And, and as a result, uh, it's because you, 
you did a, um, a double tap on the rock to produce water, uh, essentially in defiance, uh, you, uh, you abused my holiness. And then also, we see, if you combine this with what we read in Deuteronomy chapter 3, Moses actually took, the, uh, took a moment to plead with, um, I sh it, that should be pleaded with the Lord, not pleased with the Lord, had pleaded with the Lord uh, for an opportunity to, to taste the land, uh, to, to experience this promised land. But uh, unfortunately, God said no to that. He, his request was denied. But let's continue. Verse 15. Moses spoke to the Lord, saying, Let the Lord, the God of the spirits of all flesh, appoint a man over the congregation, who shall go out before them and come in before them, who shall lead them out and bring them in, that the congregation of the Lord may not be as a sheep that have no shepherd. So here, Moses turns around and says to the, uh, says to God, you know, uh, I need to be concerned about the welfare of my nation. Lord, would you be willing to raise up uh, a leader for for this nation, a leader that can lead them uh, in and out, uh, uh, and and to follow wherever he goes. And so he has this uh, big concern for for the people that he had been leading, which is quite admirable when you think about it. And when he addresses God as the spirit of all flesh, Moses really here is recognizing God's sovereign power, God's sovereign power over all man. And, and uh, he has this burden for the people, but he also knows that God is in control. And Moses here uh, himself uh was appointed by God, you know, uh, into this leadership role. Not that he was qualified, but uh, he was appointed for such a role. And uh, as a result, Moses understands the magnitude of this role. This is not something that you just assign to any ordinary person, but someone that that can truly take on the role and uh, this awesome responsibility, much in the same way that Moses did. And so, the one that is to be raised up ought to have that same commissioning as well. Verse 18. So the Lord said to Moses, Take Joshua, the son of Nun, a man in whom is the Spirit, and lay your hand on him. Make him stand before Eliezer, the priest, and all the congregation, and you shall commission him in their sight. You shall invest in him, invest him with some of your authority, that all the congregation of the people of Israel may obey. And he shall stand before Eliezer, the priest, who shall inquire for him by the judgment of the Urim before the Lord. At his word they shall go out, and at his word they shall come in, both he and all the people of Israel with him, the whole congregation." I don't know if you're tracking with this, but we see that that there are only two people that have, in a sense, survived uh, and uh, and will be entering into the promised land from that previous generation. One is Joshua, the other is Caleb. So they're these are the last two, in a sense, of this elder class. And in addition to that, Joshua stands out above. Uh, Caleb in that he was uh, present at least in Exodus chapter 17 to lead the ar army against the Amalekites and so he's he's battle tested for for one thing and that at the same time he's also served as uh, as an aide to Moses especially when uh, Moses was at Mount Sinai Joshua was there alongside him and probably witnessed the presence of God much in the same way that Moses did this mention of Urim, along with Thummim, these are the stones that are found on the breastplate of the high priest. And so, uh, so there's there's something special about swearing by or commissioning by these stones uh, to uh, to essentially say these stones represent authority, authority found in Eliezer. And so, what are we seeing here? 
Joshua actually has conferred partial authority from Moses. Again, notice the, the language here. It's not that Moses uh, invested all of, uh, all of the authority over to Joshua. And we also see that uh, Eliezer plays a role uh, alongside Joshua. And so what's, what's happening here is that uh, Joshua is given uh, the authority to lead, but he doesn't have that same relationship that Moses did in that he has to partner with Eliezer, who, who is going to consult God. And so between the two of them, uh, between Eliezer and, uh, and Joshua, they will have the full authority that Moses singularly had. And then also we see that there's this uh, obedient consent that is going to come from the people as well. They're going to see what Moses is, is doing, commissioning uh, partially the authority over to Joshua and uh, in the presence of Eliezer to recognize that Joshua plus Eliezer equals uh, the full authority of Moses. And the people have to respect that. They have to follow their lead. Let's finish this up. Verse 22. And Moses did as the Lord commanded him. He took Joshua and made him stand before Eliezer the priest and the whole congregation. And he laid hands on him and commissioned him as the Lord directed through Moses. And see, Moses here obediently followed through on what the, the Lord commanded. And we see that the commissioning of, of Joshua alongside uh, Eliezer was done in the presence of the people. It's a very public thing. And so you have this, this succession plan, the, the handing off of the power, the authority, the leadership over to Joshua. Because at this point, Moses, having seen and only seen the land, uh, the promised land, uh, this was the time where he was going to pass away and the power has to transfer over to Joshua and that authority is going to be uh, is going to be complemented by Eliezer. And Moses is obedient to all of that, all that the Lord has commanded. So what are we learning out of all this? If I were to take a step back and look at these verses here, this transition of power, this handing off of, of authority, for me, I see this. Spiritual leaders, uh, and, and seen through Moses, spiritual leaders of God care greatly for the people. They have this huge heart. They recognize the the massive responsibility that comes with leading the people. Not that they're qualified, but this is an awesome responsibility. And they take great care in that for the people, for the sake of the people. And they're intensely concerned, immensely concerned with raising up the next leaders to make sure that there is this transition of, of authority and power because this is such a huge task, because there's such a huge responsibility involved in this. Spiritual leaders take these things seriously. As Moses did, so we ought to as well. This is not something that we should t just take lightly. Amen. All right, once again, thank you everyone for sharing in this time together for... Again, setting aside the best part of your day uh, and giving it over to the Lord. I really believe that God is going to bless you through this. And, and yeah, uh, I hope you have the opportunity to kind of meditate upon this word a little bit more uh, throughout this day. And and let's continue to pray for one another. I really appreciate you uh, just uh, going on this journey through the book of Numbers together with me. Uh, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Let's do our part in promoting God's Word on this platform by influencing the uh, the YouTube algorithm. And at the same time, if you've got any prayer requests, any questions, I want to encourage you, share them. Share them in the live chat. Share them in the comments below. Or share them in the Google form, link below in the description. And let's let's pray together. Let's examine these questions together. All right. With that, have a great day. Have a great weekend. I love you guys, praying for you all, and I look forward to seeing you all soon. Take care.